Hello, I'm Anna Guiz Castro, a beginner level cook. I'm Diana Kershaw, I'm a level two cook. I am Kenshi, a professional chef with 15 years experience. For this recipe, we are going to need spaghetti, special minced meat, which means it should have the least amount of fat possible. In this case, we are going to use rump roast, which we specially requested the butchers to be minced. I'm going to use a beef rice, which I'm going to chop with a knife, smoked bacon, onion, half a bell pepper, a small carrot. We're going to need four ripe pear tomatoes, two bell peppers or capsicums, one green and one red, garlic and onion. Red bell pepper, leek, celery, onion, garlic, rosemary, a bit of tomato extract, shiitake that I'm going to hydrate in red wine, which I'm also going to use, a bay leaf, peeled pear tomato, and I'm going to add a bit of oyster sauce. To make the sauce, we're going to have to boil the tomatoes. Prior to that, we're going to mark a cross on the bottom of the tomato so that the skin comes off in a simpler way. The first thing we're going to do is tie our hair back because we don't want accidents in the pasta. I opt to use a knife. The butcher can chop it if you ask. I like it to be cut a little bit thicker. I don't want it in cubes. I'm interested in it being chopped. Now we're going to cut the tomatoes. We're going to cut them in such a way that we can add them to a food processor or blender that is into small squares, but that fit in there. This is what I call the connective tissue. It's this part that it's kind of good to leave it, but if there's an excess, remove it so as not to add too much fat to the sauce. Cut the onion very finely, tiny, like this. This is already cut, so we're going to set it aside to cut the bell peppers. Observe my method. To simplify, I'm doing everything in series because cutting with a knife can be awkward or tedious. First, I cut out slices, then strips from these slices, and finally chop them roughly with a larger knife. We're going to cut into thin strips. We're going to cut them, let's see, also into little squares. First, we're going to remove the top part of this. I'll cut the meat, bacon, and vegetables. Once everything is chopped to the desired size, I'll start cooking on the stove. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. And then we cut them in half to remove like the heart of the bell pepper. I mean, the idea of this is that everything goes into the food processor. If I have, if I consider that I have a little bit big, I chop again, roughly, in julienne, which are thin strips. With this onion, we are going to chop half to go to the food processor with the tomato and the bell pepper. And the other part, we are going to chop a quarter into very small squares that we are going to saute together with the meat. We'll proceed with the bacon. As it requires two hours of cooking, its skin, similar to the roast beef's connective tissue, will melt and enhance the flavor. I put it in the same bowl as the meat because they are going to cook together. We add in water without salt, without anything. We add the tomatoes, and in about 10 minutes, a little less. When you see that the skin is coming off, then you repeat them. And we will continue with two cloves of garlic. Moreover, the sound is outstanding. I crush it with my hand to peel it off more easily. Do wonders. Super, 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 super tiny, the garlic. Garlic cannot be missing. For me, a sauce must have garlic and bay leaf. Cutting what is the bell pepper, I'm going to cut it in brunoise. Basically, brunoise is first the clean bell pepper. It is cut into very thin strips in julienne. From the julienne, we get what is the brunoise. Mm, I'm cutting it and putting it in a little plate, in a bowl, wherever you want. A little bit of oil, necessary amount, corn oil, sunflower oil, whatever you want. I cut the leek in half to wash it well, and from this half, I start to cut it thin. We are going to place the onion, the bell pepper, in our pan. I'm also interested in the celery being in cubes and giving it a bit of crunch. It gives it a flavor like a little broth, grandma's broth. That's exactly what the celery gives it from the strips. We are removing the little tomatoes. See how the skin peels off easily. I'm going to slice the garlic. Now, with all our chopped and separated vegetables, we are going to process them. I'm going to make horizontal cuts to the knot without reaching the end. I'm interested in the onion staying whole, and I'm going to make cuts without reaching the knot. If I go all the way down, all the way to the board, all the way down until I touch the board, but I'm not gonna touch the knot. Take a look. There I start cutting cubes. We're going to add the garlic, our magic ingredient, eh, a marvel. And from now on, I chop the stripped rosemary tiny. Once they are like this, the onion is golden, the little pepper, the carrot, we add the minced meat. The same red wine that I used in the cooking is what I'm going to put on the dried shiitakes. How do we know that the minced meat is already at the point? It has to turn brown. Now we have the processed vegetables for our sauce. We have the chopped onion and garlic for the meat. But the next step is to boil the water. 
I add natural oil to the water, about a small teaspoon of salt. We already have the hot pan. I'm going to use olive oil in this case. With the next step with the meat, I'm going to use olive oil and we're going to start along with the bacon, the chopped roast beef. Always to brown a meat. The important thing is once you put it in the pan, you distribute it a little and leave it still. We call it sauteing something that is not completely fried. That is, it is not submerged in oil. It's sauteed with a little bit of oil and some things like onion, garlic. I'm going to remove the meat as it is now. I'm going to take this pan back to the fire without washing it and start cooking the vegetables. As I told you, in the time it takes to add the salt and pepper, add the onion and garlic. Two turns, 10 seconds because of the temperature of the pan and I add the onion. We're going to use a vegetable broth for our sauce, sweet paprika, curry, turmeric, a little bit of oregano and a little bit of sugar in case it's going to be a bit empty. Adding salt now makes the onion release water, regulating temperature and preventing excessive browning. We already have the meat quite dry, quite cooked, and here we can add our sauce. Once the meat is cooked, we're going to add the curry and turmeric. The onion is beginning to cook and turn translucent from the added salt. Now let's proceed with the leek. It's starting to bubble. If necessary, I see that the pan is a little dry at this moment. A little more olive oil. There, I'm done with the celery and the bell pepper. They go together. And we're going to add a pinch of sugar. We're going to add half a kilo of pasta. Now we're going to pour in the blended tomatoes. I already have the vegetables, the garlic, the onion, the leek, the celery, and the bell pepper. They're quite cooked, half stewed. Remember to keep a medium temperature. Uh, I'm going to turn up the heat again. I'm going to make a space in the middle of the pan. And here, what I'm going to throw in is two generous tablespoons of oyster sauce. Before it burns, it caramelizes. And that's what we're looking for. And finally, we're going to add half a vegetable broth cube. And I add a generous tablespoon of tomato paste. Off the heat, I add a, what's left of the rosemary, which is very, very little chopped rosemary. It's going to give it a certain aromatic imprint. And now is the time to add the shiitakes that have been rehydrated in red wine. And we're going to let it cook for about half an hour, 45 minutes. I still smell and feel a little bit of alcohol. I have to let it cook until all the alcohol is gone. Well, over here, we have the water. Those two minutes have passed. I already have a base of sofrito full of flavor with the reduced red wine. And I'm going to incorporate the meat, the meat and the bacon that was previously browned, but it's not tender enough. Remember that we only browned it and then removed it. Just like this, a small bay leaf in this case. And here I have approximately one kilogram of peeled tomatoes. I correct it with a bit of salt and I'm going to add a bit of ground chili on a heat that's almost minimal, a little bit more than minimal. We cover it and let it cook. And here we have the noodles that are bought but fresh. These are supermarket noodles, why? Because I insist that I'm making my grandmother's recipe. Imagine that at my grandmother's house, they had to feed 12 people every noon. That woman was not going to make homemade noodles. I have four zeros flour, 400 grams egg yolks. I'm not using whole egg. You can use whole egg if you want. Flour, I make a little hole in the middle. I add all the yolks, water, and I'm gonna use salt. I add the salt in the water, two teaspoons of olive oil. I start to mix with a spoon. At this moment, you can use your hands, but I choose to use a spoon so as not to get so dirty. And now what I'm gonna do is combine ingredients. Kneed, and since I have the dough sheeter, I'm going to help myself with the dough sheeter. And once I have a dough formed, once I have a smooth dough, I let it rest. We're going to move it, and now we're going to taste. And we're going to see if we need more salt, more pepper. Well, as you can see, we have the dough here, which is far from being kneaded, from being well integrated. If you still look, there are traces of flour. The dough is granulated. I'm going to use the dough sheeter for help then. I help it a little, I stretch it, I squash it more than anything so that I can grab it. I put it at its maximum width, which in this case is this, and I start to pass. Let's add a little more pepper. I'm going to give it one more pass. I film it and I store it in the fridge, at least as I told you, 40 minutes. And now I want to add a little bit of oregano, which I add now more towards the ore, rather like the second half of the cooking. To stretch the dough, I am choosing to use semolina instead of flour. Always go little by little, stretching the dough. So this is by eye and by taste. Here I have boiling water. All I'm going to do is add salt. Always add salt to the water when cooking pasta. I overlap so they all have the same thickness, the same length. I, I even out the edges without marking. I fold it twice, once twice, and I'm going to cut some ribbons about half a centimeter wide with a sharp knife so I don't hurt the dough. And then with the edge of the knife so as not to hurt the dough, you put the knife in the middle, stretch and get the pasta. 
Uh, the pasta is ready. We put the pasta, we already have the strained noodles. And as I told you before, the pasta now lacks about a minute and a half of cooking. What I want to do now is finish that minute and a half here inside, inside the pan. This cooking water thing that it has a little flour, that is it has starch, and this is going to help give body to the sauce. It will thicken a little bit. I'm going to add a little olive oil to help emulsify. And we have our little bolognese sauce. Well, now we're going to add a little oil and a little salt to the noodles so they don't stick. What I enjoy about plating is its novelty to me. So we're going to do it together for the first time. We're going to put this here and we're going to turn it with the tongs and let it go. I'm going to look for a bit of height. I'm going to roll the pasta. Here, I have a deep dish and trying not to stain the edges, we pour a bit of sauce on top. Ta-da! I like it with freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Let's try our creation for today then. This turned out amazing. It's incredible. 